Um, but there is another way now that we know, oh, yes, there are the natural ways, which we've discussed. But now we have the pineal bioregulator. Yes. Which we've discussed in other videos. And I guess folks can go and look up the ones where we've discussed that. But here is a here is a peptide that's uh, that basically you can take and you don't have to take it every day. That's one of the other things we've spoken about with these peptides. And we know it improves melatonin. So there's a choice. Yeah, there you and go. And by the way, it's not on prescription. That's why I wanted to mention it. <laughs> right. And of course, the other thing that we have talked about in past episodes is the fact that um, it's, you know, if you were interested in the pineal uh, bioregulator, it's always best to take the blood vessel along yeah. with it as opposed to pineal alone, correct? Yes, you'd, you'd get improved efficacy. Synergy is the correct word. You'd, you'd get more synergy with combining. And it's pretty obvious when you think what the blood vessel does, it improves blood flow. So it's basically going to assist anything you're going to try and do, obviously. Right. Yeah. Um, one thing that we haven't touched on, and I think we should touch on this, is I find this kind of interesting as a topic because I don't know if there's been studies on this. Is melatonin supplementation addictive? Hmm. So hmm. I don't know how much you know about this, but I can actually talk to it on my own experience. Okay. So I want to hear, you heard any any studies about this? I, about down-regulating your own production if you take, yeah. take it too the, uh, I think I've heard people mention this before. I don't believe there's any evidence. Let's put it this way. There are some people on this planet that could get addicted to anything. Yeah. Whether it's alcohol or tobacco or cheese, I don't know. Um, you know, there's always a group of people who who get fixated on something. Um, however, I don't think there's any medical evidence of addiction to melatonin. Um I've never heard of that. No, uh, me neither. No. So what's your story, Sandy? Well, uh, for myself, I have taken micro doses for many years. There are times that I don't take it. There are times that my kids don't take it. Um, and it doesn't affect their own sleep. And I have personally measured my melatonin and my melatonin is very high. Okay. So because, and so I'm gonna just surmise this because if I'm taking such small minute doses a few times a week, you know, and my melatonin is quite high, I would say it has not affected the production of my melatonin. No, it, I, I, right? I've never seen or heard, and I've seen some of the pathways for melatonin. There are, you're absolutely right. There are some hormones in our body that will downregulate if we keep ingesting them, the thyroid being one of the most obvious examples. But I've never heard of any doubt. That's why I think the safety, again, that's another good point because it's another reason for the safety profile of melatonin. Yeah. That, you know, you, it, the growth hormone would be another one. And, you know, we know of, say, bodybuilders who've just overdone it with the injections of growth hormone and now they're kind of stuck because the pituitary gland is no longer making any of their own. Um, Right. growth hormone so there are definitely some glands that you have to be careful with and that's why you should be working with a health professional of course um but in melatonin's case you know in fact the the, the hormones that are freely available on the american market at present which is melatonin pregnenolone and uh, dhea uh by the way dhea is a controlled substance in the united kingdom oh right really? Possession that's, the of, of, that's the mother hormone. Possession of DHEA in London is a felony. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Right? A lot of people don't know that. It's a low, it's a class five in the equivalent of the American rankings, but we don't call them numbers. We use other things. But, but yeah, how about that? So that just shows you. But the, those, what I want to say is those three hormones, uh, on which are on freely available on the American market, maybe on Canadian market, I don't know. Um, I don't think there's any down regulation in them. I mean, there's some notification of that because those have been available since, oh, I don't know, when was the Dietary Health and Supplement Act passed? Sometime in the mid 
to late 90s, if memory serves me. And can you imagine how many millions of bottles of those products have been sold since? Yeah. You know, and I'm sure the FDA would love to find some people that have been damaged by the free taking of it, but I don't believe it's happened. Yeah. So, Here in Canada, you can't get it. You have to have a prescription from a doctor. Right. right. And of course, melatonin makes the other hormone, right? So there are, yeah. there are four hormones that are freely available on the American market. So um, I believe also progesterone can also be obtained in a low dosage. I might be wrong in saying that, but in the U.S., yes. In yeah. the U.S., in Canada, um, no, but we can get it from the U.S. Of course, of course, yeah. absolutely. Well, it's strange. I mean, I, I can sit here in the U.K. and go to eBay.co.uk and buy DHEA from some American outlet. Yes. Yeah. But but you know I, I'm but you but I think a lot of people Brits even don't understand that yes it's perfectly legal. I don't know. It might be like going into an Amsterdam bar and buying a nice powerful hashish. Yeah. <laughs> and then trying to take it back to your home country. Oh, it's legal in Holland. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> be All right, careful. Well Phil, we've reached the hour, and I'm wondering, is there anything else that you want to add, anything that we've forgotten? I'm sure there's lots we, we haven't touched on, but anything oh, I, else? Yeah, I, I'll mention two things, if I may, Sandy. They're very, very quick things. So I'm just going to say, if any folks out there haven't been bored rigid and would like to find out some more or, or get some of the references to some of the things I've been talking about, then... The two websites we have, I'm sure I'll just quickly mention them. We have antiaging-systems.com. And if you go to the books on there, that book that you've read, which is by Dr. Walter Pierre Pauli, it's called Melatonin, the Key of Life. It's available for free download. So just go there and click on the link and, and have a look yourself. And if you want to have a look at our magazines, uh, which is called Aging Matters, if you go to agingmatters.com, same with a hyphen again between the two words, you can also download digital copies for free. And um, you might find that there's a subject there that piques your uh, interest. And like I say, the articles come with references. Yes, everything is studied with references. And this is one of the reasons I love it because it's not, and I, again, we are not, I'm not being a conspiracy theorist here. However, I'm going to say that not everything that has been well studied has to be backed by giant pharmaceutical money driven studies, mm -hmm. because there's a lot out there that's available. And I personally dig into all of it. I love it. Mm -hmm. And I love my conversation with you, Phil. I will have the information, your contact info, and those websites you mentioned in the show notes. And please, anyone can contact me if you have any questions. And of course, I want to thank you today for coming, Phil. Oh, very welcome. I've enjoyed it as always. Thanks. All right. I've stopped recording there and I've stopped recording. Uh, there, and